Look at Gryffindor finding the line with tremendous strength on the outside. I think he gets there. The deep and competitive field has come to world famous Santa Anita Park. They're here to battle for over $150,000 in cash and prizes. The field features a blend of former winners as well as fresh faces. There are those who come armed with technology. Others rely on looking at horses in the paddock. Some just use the daily racing form and a pen. Maybe they're here for the camaraderie. Nice job, man. Or perhaps it's the competition. One thing is certain, they're all here to win. This is the World Horse Players Tour. Welcome to the World Horse Players Tour, a new program that takes you inside the world of horse racing. Alongside Gabby Gaudette, my name is Matt Bernier. We'll be your hosts over the next hour as we watch eight competitors here in the 100 to 1 Club at the Great Race Place Santa Anita Park at the final table. Yesterday, we had 92 horse players begin the day vying for over $150,000 in cash and prizes. And Gabby, we're down to the final eight. That's right, Matt. Today at the final table, players will pick one horse to win each of the live races throughout the afternoon. Now, there are no requirements on the maximum bet, but for the minimum bets, they do begin at $1,000 and will increase by $500 throughout the day, kind of like blinds in a poker tournament. For more on our eight finalists, let's introduce Peter Thomas Fornatel and Jonathan Kinch. Thanks, Matt and Gabby. There is an electric atmosphere here in the 100 to 1 at Santa Anita for the first ever live bankroll final table. JK, you're a former handicapping champion yourself. What makes this format special? It's made for TV, a lot of action, a lot of leaderboard changes, and uh, win only, it's a lot easier to follow. In a horse racing tournament, a group of players compete directly against each other, and the winners walk away with the money they've won, plus additional prizes. Our champion will win over $100,000. The eighth place finisher leaves with no prize money. These guys put between fifteen dollars and $25,000 in their pockets yesterday. This is a great opportunity for them to build on that. You see our players' day one totals. That's the money they'll be betting today. Each player will bet one horse to win in each of today's nine live races at Santa Anita. They have to bet certain minimums in every race, but they can bet their whole bankroll at any time. I love it. It's no limit horse racing. All right, let's get a closer look at some of our contestants at the final table. My name's Nick Tamaro. I've been a horse player since I was six years old, so that's going on 28 years now. Tournament play tests you in a different way than just regular gambling because you're actually taking on the best of the best and gives you an opportunity to prove where you stack up against them. My name is Frank Mondoi. I've been betting horses seriously for the last 30 years. I don't believe I'm the best handicapper, but I'll outwork a lot of people. You just got to put yourself in a position to get lucky. My name is Tony Joe. I've been playing horse for eight years. I find horse racing a game of human emotions. You know, I think most people believe it's about handicapping the horses. Uh, I believe it's about handicapping the players betting on the horses. My name's Jason Avila, and I've been a horse player since I was about six years old. So that's about 30 something years. <laughs> you can only win it the first time once. I just need to pick winners, and they won't beat me if I pick winners. My name is Justin Mastari. I'm very excited. I know I'm younger than most of the people out here, but I'm here to win. Name is Tom Arndt, and I've been a horse player for about uh, 35 years. A lot of young blood in that room, and uh, we'll see if we can't uh, get one in there for the old guys. At the end of the day, I want to beat you. My name's Joseph Metke. People call me Philly Joe and I've been playing the horses for over 20 years. With the Eagles winning the Super Bowl and the Sixers going deep into the playoffs, you know, hopefully I can bring another championship home to Philly. So I'm Garrett Skiba, and I've been a horse player since I was seven. I think anytime you can win the first event of anything, uh, it's special. So uh, obviously something that's made by horse players is something I, I want to win. We've got a lot of great players at this final table and quite a range of experience. Garrett Skiba's up there. He might be the most successful live bankroll player of all time. And then you've got a kid like Justin Mistari, 23 years old, one of his first major tournaments. On screen, we can see some of the highlights from 39-year-old Garrett Skiba's impressive body of work. 
Garrett's a remarkable player. Coming into this contest with a chip lead, he has to be the favorite. If I was Justin Mustari, I'd be a little nervous sitting next to him. There we go. We're looking in at our 10 strike teller cam, where we'll learn which horses our final table contestants are playing. It's always good to see our buddy Jimmy the Teller from back east. He's on loan from our friends at Naira for the day. He usually punches tickets at the Post Bar in Saratoga. Here are the bets for race one. Our eight players have covered five different runners. Justin and Philly Joe both play the six horse, who's cutting back in distance after showing early speed last time. If that horse wins, the 23-year-old will vault to the lead. Our chip leader, Garrett, goes with the one horse, a 13 to one shot that Nick also played. Two really sharp guys on a big long shot. I can tell you right now that horse offers a ton of value. This is the first event that's ever been like this. So having to bet a minimum amount, I think we're all kind of sticking to that for the most part. So each race is gonna be a little bit like a boxing match where everybody exchanges kind of softer punches until somebody really goes for the kill later. Let's join the action as our horses are about to break from the gate in our first of nine races. Racing. Ooh, a little bit of a good, tough good start for Tom's to five, but all the other covered horses are away down. well. That's the six seizing the early advantage for Justin and Philly Joe. The one's in a good spot down inside for Garrett and Nick. And that seven in purple, just behind the leading group, is covered by Tony and Jason. Or at least that's the excuse I'm filing now. The one showed great speed last time, Seem to be showing that same speed this time. Keep in mind that drawing down on the inside of this downhill turf course isn't ideal. As they continue down the hill, you can see the six is still in control. Justin and Joe will move up if that one keeps finding more. Sitting right in behind those is the three horse, a first time starter trained by Phil D'Amato. He's known for getting these horses ready to run first time out, especially on the turf. Lots of chances here as they hit the dirt crossover and turn for home. We still have the six in the lead, but the three appears to be making a bold move on the outside. Uh, nobody has this three horse. If he can straighten him out, he's probably going to win. He's clear and running away, not to start our players now. No one has the three. No one has the three. Good result. We're good. good result. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nice. Here. She had him, man. Nobody had the three. No one Ooh, no. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so first race I went with just the minimum amount. And I don't even remember what horse I played. It's <laughs> didn't win. Oh, I played the one. Finished up the track, so. The boys had a good laugh after they all managed to whiff in race one. Definitely not what they were looking for to get started in this contest. But Justin and Philly Joe should feel good about running second. At least they're seeing the ball well. It's early days in this contest, and there'll be plenty of action to come. Let's check in with Gabby for a closer look at Santa Anita Park. Santa Anita belongs in any discussion about the world's most beautiful racetracks. With the stunning backdrop of the San Gabriel Mountains and an old meets modern charm that echoes through the 84-year-old walls, Santa Anita earns its nickname, the Great Race Place. Santa Anita has been home to many of the greatest horses and races in history including the race where the legendary Seabiscuit capped his storied career in the 1940 Santa Anita Handicap. In modern years, superstars like Breeders' Cup Classic winners Arrogate and Zenyatta cemented their names in racing history while competing here. Santa Anita was also the home to recent Triple Crown winner American Pharaoh, who ended a 37-year drought in 2015. Since the Stronach Group purchased Santa Anita in 1998, a great emphasis has been placed on the customer experience. Consider the chandelier room, which allows race goers to dine on food from top local chefs in an elegant atmosphere. There's even a speakeasy hidden away, if you know where to find it. Thanks, Gabby. All right, JK, the players have made their bets for race two. What do you think? There are only three horses covered in here. The two, the three, and the five. I kind of like the two who ran a big speed figure two races back. The favorite is number five, the heavily bet Noble Nick. He ran in a graded stakes race last time and is now in against much weaker. He was played by Justin, Nick, and Frank. Nick Tamaro stepped out a bit here, betting significantly more than the blind. It's Noble Nick, Junior Gillian, and Carville. 
by a length and a half from five is the gray horse fighting for the lead on the outside justin nick and frank all have him keep in mind the five horse is the horse that nick bet four thousand dollars on the three is also an important runner to keep your eyes on here tony and philly joe have him that's the one inside the five this two is covered by some players he's got a little bit of a shot in behind he might run into some traffic trouble what are you doing get through there come on come on get nick. Oh. Billy Joe and Tony's three is fighting hard, but the five is going to get home. Oh my God. Nice hit, How do you get boxed in at a six-horse oh, field? a terrible field? ride. Five-horse field. Uh, yep. yep. Nice ride. Big result there for Nick, Justin, and Frank. Noble Nick. Yeah, I couldn't let that go by. <laughs> I'm just playing names. We have a new leader, JK, and it's Nick Tamara. Nick's a huge Sopranos fan, and I call him Nicky the Boss. And right now, he's the boss of this field. That was terrible. Did you hit that one? Yeah. Nice. It's probably past me now. Even money. I went with uh, the three, and uh, he got uh, Noble Nick, the five, caught him at the wire again, and again I ran, I ran second. So right now I'm in the lead after two races, but unfortunately there are seven to go. Here's a look at our DRF tournament's leaderboard after race two. You can see that Nick, Justin, and Frank have all improved their bankrolls. Nick and Philly Joe have known each other a long time. JK, what's it like to compete against a good friend? They might be friends on the ride over and the ride home, but while they're here, it's every man for himself. Uh, getting to compete with Joe and against Joe is really a true delight given that we've spent so much time together in racing. Competing against Nick is gonna be tough. It's great in a way, and it's also, it's tough in a way. I mean, we've been friends for over 10 years. So the competition's gonna be stiff between us. Yeah, my strategy for today is to take what the contest gives us, not to try and be overly creative, but to uh, take the opportunities to bet on horses that I think can win. Betting-wise, I am aggressive. Contest-wise, I've been uh, a little more conservative. Best case scenario, I mean, it's gotta be me and Nick at the, at the final two. I'm prepared, I'm ready, and now's the time. If you made a short list of the best tournament players to have never won a major, Nick Tamaro and Tony Joe would be on it. You can see all the close calls Tony's had, including five seconds in major events. Is it possible there's a flaw in his game to not have won a big one by now? No, I don't think so. I think it's a sign of his quality that he keeps putting himself in position to win these big events. Eventually, he'll get over the hump. So it's race three. Um, I decided to go out of the box. Spent 2,000 on a 70 to one shot. Just tried a massive lead. Um, I, had, I thought the horse should have been around 30 to one. It was going off a 71. I thought it was a good chance to just blow out the field. You heard the man, JK. Tony Joe picks a 75 to one shot here. When the picks went up on the screen, I thought he told Jimmy the teller the wrong number. That is a bold pick, but in these maiden races, none of these horses have won a race and the results can be chaotic. Tony's pick is a first time starter, meaning this is the first race of his career. Players who know equine physicality tend to love maiden races. Frank McGowie is one of those guys. I like betting those kind of races. You can see a lot of improvement from race to race. It's a learning experience for these horses. Uh, it's kind of like if, if you would go park outside of a kindergarten on the first day and the kids get out and they're digging their heels in the ground, their mothers are dragging them to the door and they're all crying and screaming, they're afraid. A lot of these horses are like this the first time they go to the post. But then on the second day of kindergarten, they get out of the car and they run straight to the door because they know all their friends are gonna be in there. Well, these horses get used to it too. So you can expect big improvement from race to race, just like you can from day to day. Looking again at the bets for race three, Frank played number four, Captain Buzzkill, a horse also covered by Nick and Garrett. The four makes a ton of sense in this spot. He ran in a stake as a two-year-old and missed a break in his three-year-old debut. It's important to note that Garrett bet the most here, 5,000, and I still can't believe Tony bet 2,000 on a 75 to one. Fly first class, Rick Larger going Tom and Philly Joe race. have the five, the, the gray who's half. moving well outside, Captain but he's got plenty of company on the front end. The five broke poorly last time. The connections and anyone who bet their money on the five has to be happy with this position. Tony's 75 to one shot is running well on the outside in black and yellow. 
and you can see the four who Nick, Garrett, and Frank all played beginning to make a move from the back on the inside. The seven and the four could be getting a nice setup with these three horses up front battling for the lead. Got a shot, Nicky T. Followed by Captain Buzzkill picking up nicely along the Five swinging up on the outside, and you can also see Tony 75 to one in black and yellow looking pretty good. Ooh, but as they hit the dirt crossover, he didn't like the change in footing. It's over. This gray five horse looks like he's got this thing wrapped up. It looks like he's going to put this two away. That would be fantastic news for Tom and Philly Joe, JK. Yeah. Wait a second. This two isn't done on the inside. Come on, two. This five might be losing focus. Come on, two. He is, JK, and it's going to cost him the race. Oh. That helps. That helps. No, nobody Jason. did. <laughs> I thought he did, yeah. No one had the two. You bet the two, Jason? No one did. That's what I was rooting oh. for. <laughs> Soretti looked sure to get home there for Tom and Philly Joe JK. Then he gets beat by a horse no one played. You don't see that too often, PTF. When a horse clears like that in the stretch, they're usually home and hose down. And how about Tony Joe? His 75 to one shot writ large, wide the whole way and runs on to be a good fourth. I guess that play wasn't so crazy after all. He came flashing home late and galloped out ahead of the rest of the field. Third race, I felt very confidently about the five horse and, and I went heavy, 3,500, where the minimum was uh, 2,000. And uh, I thought uh, halfway down the lane, he was home free and the two horse came back and uh, caught him. Good news was that no one in the group had the two horse. I thought Jason bet the two. <laughs> Great, greatest reverse route of the day. I played um, Sir Eddie. I thought he was a lock. I know he was a low, a low price, but I was in a position where I needed to try to just make some money uh, because of the minimums are going to keep going up. So I was just trying to make, you know, double my money real quick. And again, he ran second. So I, the first three races I've run second, and it's hasn't been good so far. There's Tony Joe trying to finalize his bets for race four. I call him the Terminator because just like Arnold in the movie, he's part man, part machine. He doesn't study the daily racing form. He uses a computer algorithm to do the handicapping and guide his betting decision. I need to get me one of those algorithms. And how about Frank McGoey sitting next to him? Two weeks ago, he was third in the Kentucky Derby betting challenge. Frank's a professional player with an old school vibe about him. He's used to looking at 50 races a day. He's only got to look at nine today. This is going to be like a vacation. Tony and Frank take completely opposite approaches, but they've both had success. And that's the thing about horse players. They might not agree about many things, but they can all bond over a simple question. Who do you like in the double? Worst case scenario it comes down to me and the computer guy. This is my day job. I work as a quantitative analyst for hedge fund, and I build computer models to figure out where a stock price is going to move. And stock prices and horses are very much the same thing. I just basically built a model horse race and helps me uh, play the horses. I mean, these computer guys that are, that are batching money in and, you know, they've been making a lot of money. So if you can get it done, I respect you. I mean, it's, a, it's not the way it works for me. Yeah, so experience is definitely key. Um, but what's great about computers is I can crunch decades worth of data and uh, basically get up to speed pretty quickly. I do think I have an edge. I rarely make a bet until I see a horse on the track because I, I think I've got a good eye for what a good horse looks like and if a horse is moving well. The computer's not going to tell you that. Part of my model pulls in video feeds, so um, it's like an automated paddock profiler. I've been turning to profit at this for a while, so that's enough for me. As Casper mentioned, basically we have a good, very good player with a very good computer. It'll beat the best computer or the best grandmaster. So I believe that in horses also. I think we might have to relook at some things. I'm going to terminate the competition. What an amazing group of guys. Let's see what they're up to as we head into race four. It's the fourth race coming up. I'm in second place, and I'm going to play the four in this race. I think it's a, a tough race from a betting perspective with two clear standouts, the four and the six. And so I just need to decide between one of those two. And that's what uh, I'm going to do. I agree with Garrett. It seems like this race comes down to two horses, the four, Blazing Prospector, and the six, Om Derman. What would you do here? It's tricky. The four has shown a ton of early speed and is cutting back in distance, while the six was super wide in his last start and has won at the distance five times. 
I'd probably go with the four. Looking at the picks, seven of our eight players at the phasing Tipton final table are on one of those two, with the lone exception being Tony Joe. Look at that, Philly Joe with the biggest bet, doubling the blind with a $5,000 move on the four. And if the four wins, Justin Mustari will vault to the lead. We're off and running at Santa Anita for race four. The race is up for grabs as the field turns for home. Take a look at this four horse, in between, not ideal, but look at his hand on the jockey. Doesn't seem to be asking much. You can see that one pulling to the front and looking strong in the red cap. If he holds on, that'll be a winner for four players, Justin, Garrett, Tom, and Joe. Come on. The six on the outside has a little shot, but he better hurry up. Come on, six! Run away with it! Come on, six! Looks to be flattening out a little bit, but the five is still a big threat. The five's a huge threat. Hang on, baby. Hang on. So four is going to hang on and shake up this leaderboard. Big goings on in that last race. The kid. 23-year-old Justin Mastari shooting to the lead. What do you think this guy's chances are of going all the way? He's got a great chance. He's obviously had some really strong plays yesterday. Some of the stuff he did yesterday was next level. Uh, he's top of the leaderboard now. I feel pretty good that I'm ahead of Garrett. A man of few words, Justin is now ahead of Garrett Skiba, who came into today as a big favorite. The other important move I see is Philly Joe hit his big bet, and now he's out of the basement. Also moving up in race four was Tom Arndt. Tom lives in carefree Arizona, but spends a lot of time at the SoCal tracks. Tom's definitely a high roller. I've seen him firing away in the Eddie Logan suite. Do you think he and the local guy, Jason Avila, have an edge against these out-of-towners? There's always a level of comfort when you're playing at your home track. Being at my home track, I think, does give me an edge because I follow this track the most. It's definitely an advantage to myself to be here in my, my backyard, basically. Home field advantage here uh, is very important. The fact that I come to the track here a lot, Santa Anita, that uh, it does give me a little bit of an advantage as far as knowing the track, uh, knowing the trainers, knowing the jockeys. You know, I was brought into the game by my grandfather, and uh, he passed away when I was younger, and. I feel like he'd be proud of me, and I think about him every time I walk through these gates. He's here with me. I feel him all the time. In horse racing, the betting favorite is also known as the chalk. And the chalk here, number nine, our Tigers boy, is a popular play in race five, with Garrett, Tom, Tony, and Philly Joe all landing on him. I like the nine, but I also like the five. It's a short race, so forwardly placed types like those typically have an advantage. Let's see what the guys are thinking as we approach race five. As the minimum bets keep increasing, uh, it gets a little more tense. So you're going to see some movement soon, and then I'm sure somebody's going to hit the panic button soon. So we're going into race five, and I'm currently in the dreaded last spot. So it's time to make something happen. Um, the, the minimums are getting high. The bankroll's getting low. So it's time to make a move. Let's get back to the action for race five. Racing. Nice beginnings for the five and the nine. Good thing nobody bet this four horse. Four of our players have the nine in blue on the outside. Jason Avila, our only player to have the five in blue and tan down on the inside. The five's not in an ideal spot being stuck down on the inside, but he could be good enough. And Nick's 11 showing a lot more speed than I thought he would. Looks to me that the five and the nine are really seizing control now. Come on, baby. This five will move up Jason, or the nine could be a big win for Garrett, Tom, Tony, and Joe. Has about seven lengths to pick up at the 516 pole. Captain These two have turned this into their own private match race. Three lengths, Papa Caballero. They're in a great position. I don't really see anything closing from behind. And a long margin to Scorpion Excess. Come on, five. Shake him up. Shake him up. Come on, five. Come on, five. Jason Avila getting really into this route, and it seems to be working. His five is finding more on the inside. Seems to be putting this nine. Look, look at this six feet on the outside. Absolutely flying. Jason celebrating, but this is going to be close. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Eliezer Warriors in the wind photo with him. Now Tiger's going to Wow. Did five get there? I don't know. Six six the six definitely won. I thought I was close. I don't know. It was, it was a tough scene in there. It really was for him. I don't even see the six. I know. I know. I know. He just was very deflated. 
very deflated. I, I got to take a walk. <laughs> I'll be back. I thought I won, and I did something that is like a cardinal sin to me. Um, I turn around before the horses cross the wire thinking I won because I was so focused on the two horses in front and I just needed to beat the one on the outside of me. And he put the horse away and I turned around to go celebrate and I didn't see a horse flying down the outside of the track and caught me literally at the wire by a nose. And so I, it was like the highest high and the lowest low right at the same time and I'm pissed. I'm still pissed. I'm trying to get over it, but um, it is what it is. You've got to feel for Jason Avila, beat by a horse who was seen at a mall in West Covina as the field turned for home. After that beat, Jason will now have to make an all-in push in race six. I have $4,000 and I have to bet it all here. And so I, there's a horse I like here. I was hoping to go in with more money so I could bet more than the minimum, um, but I have no choice now. I have to bet it all. JK, tell me, what is the feeling like when you go all in? It's exciting. You know that the, the whole tournament landscape can change in that one moment, uh, and you can also go home. I've competed against Jason, and he's a smart player. He made a mistake there, but that's what happens when you bet horses. I'm sure he'll be able to shake it off. You mind if I smack you? No, punch me. You're gonna win now, all right. come on, baby. $4,072 to win on the six. All right, all in. Gotta yeah, do it now. Time. You gotta do it. You gotta do it. Yeah, All right. All right. Okay. As you just saw on the 10 strike teller cam, Jason is forced to push all in on number six, Awesome Heights. The good news is that I hear Jason's been waiting all day to bet this horse. If you're gonna put your tournament life on the line, it's better to do it on a horse you really like. Things are really starting to develop here. Depending on which horse wins this race, five different players could be in the lead. Let's check in at the final table as the horses are approaching the gate for race six. You know, people that don't come a lot do that or when somebody's with me and they're like, you got it. I'm like, don't say that. And I did it. And I. <laughs> It's not like it was caught on camera or anything. Oh, no, no. Oh, the jockey had a picture. hell of an oh <laughs> moment, too. Did you see? Was, he didn't, re well, he didn't know anybody was coming on no, that. No, I mean, you look at the photo, did you see the photo? Yeah, he's, he's looking, looking over, over like, who the hell are you? Really? <laughs> Jason, if none of us can win, we're all rooting for you, buddy. You've given us the two best roots of the day. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was for sincerity. For two losers. <laughs> no, for one, because nobody, one nobody had. And the other one was and a the loser. Other one nobody had, right. <laughs> Racing. Everybody seemed to break well here. Already, you can see them quickening up this pace as they head down the hill. Treasure Hunter, followed by General Mark IV. Smuggler Union within a length of the speed running fourth. Cool Green is fifth. Three Horses horses height, vying six, for the lead. The five, the six, and the seven and three could get the setup they time. want closing it's from off the pace. Char battling for the lead with Treasure Hunter. General Mark four is a close third. I like the way the Jason yeah. six in the blue cap three from the back is settling in. That one might be heard from late. This three horse is going to get this inside trip. We like to call that the pocket, sitting right in behind the leader. That would be great news for Philly Joe and Tony. Putting a length on Treasure Hunter with three eights to go. One length to come, come on. The three is going to need to get a little bit lucky with this rail opening up. One time, baby. Come on with this eight. Everybody's got a shot now. One time, baby. The one's coming off of it a little bit. On, the three got right through. Get him going straight. Get him going straight. Don't count out Jason's all in six, producing a big run in the blue cap on the outside. Come on with this eight. The seven's still running, too. Come on. has a useful. Six is starting to get a little leg weary in the stretch, and that's great news for Philly Joe, who is now in the lead. Oh, Philly Joe. Nice shot, Philly. Philly Joe? Philly Joe. Wow. Nice hit, man. All righty. Not time to really start drinking. Start drinking? Didn't he just chug a beer? Thank you. Oh, I don't know, guys. Pete. I thought that was just a big sip. Good luck, buddy. Yeah. Just like that, Jason Avila's tournament life is over. All over. I thought for a second there he started to run. Everybody got a shot when they turned for home, it felt like. They all fanned out. I thought, I thought Jason's horse was going to win for a minute. We just finished up the sixth race, and I had the winner, uh, Cool Green. I had 3,500th to win on it, and it just put me in the lead. So we'll see what happens. Three more, a lot of racing left, but we'll see what happens.
It's standard advice to never gamble against a man who has the same first name as a city. These other players at the final table are beginning to see why. You have to feel for Jason. He was the only Californian at this final table, and I know he wanted to have a better showing than that, especially with all his friends and family here to cheer him on. He made a bold play. It just didn't work out this time. Matt is standing by with Jason now. Joined by Jason Avila, the unfortunate first contestant in the final table, booted. Race six just concluded. Jason, immediate thoughts. Ah, uh, bummed, bummed. It was highs and lows, like, to the max. I, I took a shot the race before, lost by a nose, thought I won the race. That would have put me in a good spot to keep going and not be so pressured to bet all my money. Um, I liked the horse in the last race. I was going to bet it anyways. I was forced to bet all my money on it. She looked like she was going to make a run for a second, and then that was short-lived, and she flattened out, and it was over. But um, it's all good. I had fun, but I didn't want to be the first person out. I really didn't. <laughs> Jason Avila, one of the best contest players in the world. Unfortunately, an early exit this time around. You played well all week, and congratulations. We'll see you around next time Thank soon. You, man. Appreciate it. Have Let's get back to the action. Looking at the new leaderboard, you can see that Tony Joe also hit there and has moved up into second. Maybe today will be the day that Tony finally breaks through and gets that big win. Looking at the bottom of the leaderboard, it's the three most experienced players, Garrett, Tom, and Frank, who are just hanging on, while the kid, 23-year-old Justin Mustari, is holding tough in third. When I was 23, I was still doing keg stands and betting dollar exacta boxes. You've got to wonder what's going on in this kid's head. Yeah, I know Garrett Skiba. Probably know the success he's had in tournaments. Yeah, you know, Justin's great. You know, I've been friends with him and his dad for a while now. I got into horse playing when I was younger. My dad was a big part of that. He taught me how to read the sheets. His dad is a, a really good player in his, in his own right, and uh, I'm sure he learned a couple things from him along the way. I'm not intimidated by him. I think, obviously, having success always gives you an edge in terms of being able to play with confidence and not having to worry about, um, you know, this being your first time. The experience of being out here and having friends and family here with me is is going to help me win this tournament. I, I don't really fear anyone, so <laughs> it's, it'll be fun no matter how it turns out. Forty-five hundred twenty-nine to win on a three. Are we going to wake up or what? All in is the last button on Gabe's coat. Well, I can't now. Enough. I'll just give you a high five because what's the name? I, I smacked him and he, I smacked him twice. Uh, if we survive lost. this one, we'll win it. All right. Go. Good luck. Good luck, guys. Uh, we are on race number seven. And what I just did, I'm not crazy about, but I'm trying to survive because I've got some opinions in the last race. But I need to, I'm at the end of my bankroll. My minimum bet here is $4,000. I've only got 4530 left. So I bet all 4530 to win on the three horse, the favorite. I'm not crazy about the price. I wouldn't normally bet but I think he's the most likely winner, and I just need to survive to make the next bet to try to get to the last race to bet on the horse I do. Our top six players all play a minimum, but Tom Art takes a big swing of 8,300. And as we saw there, Frank McGoey is all in on the three, Naughty Sophie. She is a likely winner, but I do prefer the four, Teng's Rhythm. She had a bad trip last time and offers a lot more value. Billy Joe and Justin both agree with you. They played her. Let's see how it plays out in race seven. Naughty Sophie making headway Nothing yet the from the, the covered runners as they she make their way into the turn, third, but there's still time for them to get involved. To the three didn't break very well, though. The three and the four are both in okay positions down on the inside. Frank really is going to need this three horse to do something. That's the one in third in the dark blue silks, or this is going to be the end of the tournament for Frank McGoey. These jocks seem to be letting this two horse, a long shot, get away a little bit. Two is gone. Who looks good. I imagine they're figuring the horse is going to come back, but she's still traveling strongly on the lead. The rider's shaking the reins of this two horse. She's starting to open up a little bit. These other horses better get running. Our players are going to be feeling a little bit nervous right now. The three and the four still trying to get involved, but they both have a lot of work to do. The three looks done to me. The four's got a little shot down on the inside. Come on with this four. But it's Beast Wildcat. None of our players are going to get a thing in race seven, and that means Frank McGoey is going home. I think I'm going to bet that one 100 times out of 100. <laughs> what was this workout report? Is this a solid C plus? 
Is yeah. that what it was? Yeah. Yep. Of course. Yeah. Right? Good luck. Good luck Same to you. to you. You still got plenty of bullets. Huh? I got enough to bet the last two. Good. Okay. Yep. That's one. Good, good luck. luck yep. All right, guys. Good luck. Yeah. Thanks, man. Good luck, Justin. Frank McGoey, ever the gentleman, saying his goodbyes to his fellow final table participants. See you later. I'm sure, I'll see, see you around. I'm sure I'll see you somewhere up there. All right. You're always up there. Let me do the walk of shame. <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. Turn the page. We get him tomorrow. That's how it goes. 24 to 1 shot wins, and nobody has it in race seven. That was a tricky result. I couldn't have bet that horse with your money. Gabby Gaudette is with Frank McGoey now. Frank, coming up in race seven, you did go all in on the number three at two to five. Did you find that you had any other options or you were kind of backed into a corner today? I, I was backed into a corner, but I was looking to survive because I have some opinions later on. But now I just play those opinions in my pocket. Can't play in the contest. Well, in terms of strategy, what was your approach today? I, I treated it just like I would any other day, honestly. And I have no gripes. Every horse that I bet on today, I got the setup I thought I was going to get. The horse just either didn't perform or didn't do enough to get there. I mean, all you can do is try to imagine where they're going to be. You know that. You handicap horses. Do you get a little bit of a pit in your stomach when you see the horse that you bet on just not get out of the gate like that? No, I've been doing it a long time. <laughs> I mean, you just got to turn the page. All right. Thank you very much, Frank. Thank you. I tried to take what was easy in race number seven, and it didn't work out that way. I bet the favorite, Naughty Sophie, who did not run well. And looking back on it, I regret it and probably should have looked for a bit better price, but I don't think I would have ever bet the winner. I bet number four in, in race seven. He didn't win the race, but I still stayed in third place, and I got a couple more races to go. We've reached the penultimate race of the first World Horse Players Tour event, and two more of our players are going all in. Tom Art has to go all in to cover his blind, but Garrett makes a big play. Being in the lead going into the last is a huge advantage. You have the ability to block players behind you, and you have the protection of the horses that no one else is playing. Everyone has played one of the two heavy favorites, number four, Libby's Tail, or number five, We All Have Dreams. Let's see what happens here in race number eight. Good beginnings for the four and the five in race eight. All of our players have one of those two. What happens here will dictate the strategy heading into our last race. They both broke okay, but it looks like it's going to be a scramble for the lead. Looks like it's going to set up here with about five horses across the track. Four and the five in between. What a I would like my position on the four or the five. Libby's tail, the two leaders. Life of illusion. Is Doesn't look like it's like getting that. any better. Yeah, the five just got shuffled out of there a little bit too. Oh man, backing out of it. Now the four's getting shuffled out of there. Smiling tigress, off and running around. These guys can't be happy about their position. Jeez, done. Especially Tom and Garrett. Their tournament lives depend on this race. Nope, all done. Garrett's beat and he knows it. Look at the expression on his face. Don't let him get near his Twitter. Nobody. Tom in a similar position. These guys are seasoned horse players. They know when they're beat. Uh, I tell you what, they got a good chance of running last and second to last here with the four and the five. Tom and Garrett, two of the three most experienced players at the table, they're both going home. Tough game, Pete. You're going to be wrong more than you're right. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah. Yeah, good stuff. That was my ultimate. Good luck, buddy. He got bad at the end. Oh, that's it for Garrett Skiba. He came here as the favorite, but his quest for another six-figure cash will have to wait for another day. He might be the best live bank tournament player in history, but he had zero luck today. Tom Arndt is going home as well. Because Skiba had more money going in, he'll finish fifth with Tom checking in sixth. We're down to just four players at our final table, and there's still more than $150,000 on the line as we head to our final race. Before we get to that, Matt is standing by with Garrett and Tom. All right, joined here by Tom Arndt and Garrett Skiba. Unfortunately, both of them bounced after the eighth race here at Santa Anita on Sunday afternoon. Let's start off with you, Tom. You had 4,500 going into that race. That was the blind. Was it a horse that you even liked, or did you feel like just because you were forced in that position, you got to make a play? No, absolutely. That uh, stuck to my guns, and that was a horse I liked from the beginning of the day and and uh, felt he had the you know best in class. and and uh, give me a chance to uh, make a wager in the last race. Now, Garrett, you were in a little bit of a different position there. You had 9,900 going into that race. 
one, was it a horse that you really liked? And two, was it a situation where you didn't want to get into a position where you had to play a horse you may not like in the last? I think it was a little bit of both. I really liked the five coming into the race, and I really thought that the three was a horse I really had earmarked in the last race to play, and the last thing I wanted to do would be blocked in the last race. And so really it was a situation was go all in, try and hit both of them and win it all, or finish fifth. Two of the top contest players in the world. Tom, Great. Garrett, congratulations this weekend, guys. Let's get back to the action for the finale. It all comes down to this, JK. What do you think's gonna happen here? We'll know a lot more in a minute when our four remaining players get back from seeing Jimmy the Teller, and we can post those picks on the screen. Give me last race, Santa Anita, 6,000 to win on number 12. I know you're gonna go with a long shot. You never know. Thanks. Race nine, uh, last race, uh, 12,683 on 11 to win. Woo! I'm in. Here we go. Let's go for it. <laughs> you, you got there. balls. You got balls. You got balls. Good luck. Oh boy. I would be sweating bullets if I was here. After race number eight, I'm in fourth, which of course is the worst position in this contest to finish in because you get a smaller prize and no seat to a larger tournament. So hopefully I can make a little move in the last. It's five minutes to post going to the last race, and I'm not sure exactly what horse I'm playing, but I'm trying to win this tournament. It's down to four of us now. I'm in the lead by maybe $2,000 or so. So we'll see what happens. You know, obviously, Philly Joe in the lead, he has an edge, right? Because um, he, he can do the most blocking, right? So it's going to be interesting what happens. But um, I, have a I have a good feeling of what people are going to make. So. Tony had a good feeling, but Justin Mustari made the sharpest move. He wins if the three is victorious, and he left the most on his bankroll besides Joe. That's a brilliant play by Justin. Even if he doesn't win at all, now he'll run second if no one else hits. There's our thoroughbred idea foundation implied probability screen. It uses the odds on the tote board to predict each player's chance of winning this contest. It's important to remember that while Tony, Nick, and Justin each have one horse, Philly Joe has seven different horses running for him. His actual selection of the nine, plus the six uncovered horses. Joe has the edge and it's a significant one. That's true, but the other players should feel good that they're all drawing live if the horse they pick gets the job done. That's what you want to see at the end of these contests. There's four people left. I'm in third right now, just above the guy in fourth. So I'm going to keep myself in a position to stay in third, but I'm trying to still win this tournament. My worst case and best case scenario is going up against Nick, and it actually looks like it's going to come true now. So we're, uh, we're down to the last race, and we'll see who can, uh, who can pull it out. Let's have a look at our remaining four players as the horses load for the lucky last. Nick Tamaro looking uncharacteristically nervous. I can think of a hundred thousand reasons why. They're all in. Let's see what happens. Looks like a good break for everyone in the race that will determine our champion. The three is going to the lead for Justin. He'll be happy with that. Should save ground down on the inside. Unbelievable. Philly Joe not happy at all, being so far back off off what looks like a modest pace. But remember, he's got six other horses running for him as well. Still every chance. Tony's 11 in the pink silks and Nick's 12 are going to have to find a way to save some ground. You can see Tony's 11 in pink settling nicely at the back of the pack. Justin's three is on the lead here, going easy, ears flopping back and forth. He's got to love his position down on the inside. Billy Joe, a major threat here too. He's got this four, eight, and ten. Ashley Love Sugar second last and Rye the trailer for the half mile pole in the crystal water. The three has been dictating since the start of this race. It'll be interesting to see what happens when these horses really come to him. Will he find for Justin? Two of Joe's going up beside Justin's. This is going to be a real fight to the finish. Tony's 11 horse in the pink silks towards the back starting to rev up its engine. He's going to be heard from late, I think. How about Justin's three? Maybe in a little bit of trouble, but no. Finding more on the rail. Don't forget, Joe has the eight, the four, the one, the two. He's got this thing surrounded. Tony's 11 kicking into high gear now in pink on the outside. Justin's horse isn't done yet. The four wins and so does Philly Joe. Thank you. Thanks, man. Who won that race? I don't know, four.
Philly Joe wins the day in a fantastic finish at Santa Anita. Since Soy Fett was one of those uncovered horses that Joe had in addition to his selection, he's yet another Philly champion in 2018. Justin Mustari's horse led a long way, and Tony's horse was flying late. Amazing stuff from the kid, who outfoxes Tony and Nick to get second. And for Tony, the wire just came too soon once again. I finished fourth overall, but my friend Joe won, so of course I'm thrilled for that. It looked like the three was home. Down the stretch, he was still in the lead and just got beat by the four at the end. But I still ended up finishing in second place and had a very successful weekend. I will definitely be bragging to Garrett Skiba for the rest of the year and hopefully next year I'll do the same. Joe, congratulations, but I'll be back. Gabby and Matt are with Philly Joe now. Now happy to introduce the inaugural champion of the World Horse Players Tour, Philly Joe Metka. This is a comeback story for the ages. You began the day in last place and you worked your way all the way to the top. How did you do it? just grinded away I you know I got I was down to almost my last two bets and in the fourth race I made a sizable bet um, on the four horse and you know I got lucky I, no one was really hitting anything so my lead sort of was stayed safe well, huge congratulations thank you very much and Philly Joe on top of the cash obviously you get this lovely members only jacket this might be the real win of the entire contest Congrats to Philly Joe and thank you for watching. We'll see you next time on the World Horse Players Tour.